finally, I told you in December of 2019, as we were approaching, going into 2020, I told you that the work of God and the work of man, I said the work of man that has advanced will collide with the work of God that has also advanced. I told you. I told you that they will collide in 2020. I told you that in December of 2019. What kind of a year 2020 was going to be? There will be a collision. But I also told you what the result will be. It's important that you understand. The Bible tells us about the rod of Moses, which was in the hand of Aaron. And the scriptures declare that when Moses put his rod on the ground before Pharaoh, Pharaoh called his experts and his magicians. And they also cast their rods on the ground. Moses had one rod. They had several. They wanted to show Moses he knew nothing. They said, it's only one rod you came with. <laughs> so you have only one snake. Well, they had several. But the Bible says, Moses' rod swallowed the rest of them. Swallowed them up. It shall be so in these last days. It shall be so in these last days. Then the Bible tells us how the ark of God was captured. You can read about it in 1 Samuel chapter 5. The ark of God was captured and they carried it to the house of Dagon, the God of the Philistines. They were so happy, they set the ark of God beside Dagon. The Bible tells us this great image of Dagon. When, they came, when the people came the next morning, Dagon fell down before the ark of God. They were surprised. But they didn't want to believe it had anything to do with the ark. So they, they set up Dagon again. This time, when they came back, Dagon fell again before the ark of God, broke his neck, and broke his hands. When they saw that, they began to carry the ark of God from one city to the other. Every city they took the ark of God to, the people were smitten with emeralds. They were smitten with the presence of God. Many began to die until they returned the ark of God back to Israel. Let me say this to you. Maybe you don't know who you really are in Christ. Maybe you don't know what it is for you to have the Holy Spirit inside you. Maybe you don't know. Did you know the ark of God is in your heart today? That's another day's message. Number three. A slingshot from David. Remember, Goliath of Gath with the army of the Philistines came out against Israel. And there's a young man who was not even old enough to be in the army. His name is David. He comes out against Goliath. And the Bible says Goliath, when he looked and saw David, he disdained him for he was but a youth. And he cursed him by his gods. He was so mad at David. He said, I'll give your flesh to the birds, 
He said, you think I'm a dog? He was so upset. He was so angry. But then, the Bible says, David addressed him and said, you come against me with a sword, with a shield, with a spear. But I come against you in the name of the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. He said, this day, the Lord will give you into my hands. And I will take your carcass and the carcasses of the host of the Philistines and give them to the birds of the air. He says, and the whole assembly shall know that God doesn't save with shield or spear or sword. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. They can't understand how the work of God is working today. Earlier on today, Pastor Diola was sharing something about the, uh, what God said to Elijah when he was making an intercession against Israel in Romans, the 11th chapter. And God said to him, I have 7,000 men. <laughs> 7,000 men that haven't bowed their knees to bow. Elijah didn't even know. That means that the authorities of the day had no clue yes, that he had 7,000 men that had not bowed the knee. 7,000, that's a lot. Because Elijah thought he was the only one. He says, I'm, I'm, I'm the only one. What am I going to do? God said, it would have been wonderful if God said, I got seven. Not seven. It would have been amazing if he says, I got 700. Not 700. 1,700 would be a lot. But he says, I've got 7,000. That's a lot of people. And... I kind of like what Paul said right there. I want you to look at it. I like the way he, he, he put a, an interesting word to it. He makes intercession against Israel. No wonder he says all of them. Look at it in verse, we'll read from verse 4. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. <laughs> They're saying as it was then, so it is now. Did they know that God could have, God could have five billion people around the world? Hallelujah! At the time that they were forbidding people from going to church, did they know that God could have this many? They're not there to watch football? That means there are more people listening to God, to, God, to the gospel, than anything else today. Think about it. Woohoo! Glory to God! <laughs> Hallelujah. Did they know that could happen? Our Heavenly Father is not a loser. He's not a loser. He always wins. He is not willing that any should perish, so he, he tells us to preach the gospel. He empowers us. He puts his word in our mouths. He empowers us with the Holy Spirit to cause men to listen to the word and the Spirit prompts them to hear and to receive the word. Blessed be God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And we're going to win more people to Christ. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Think about this. What's happening today is a result of prophecies of many men and women of God many years ago. They prophesied it. They said it was going to happen. 
But many didn't know how. How? How? But just when, just when they thought it was over, just when they thought it was over, ha kung gradiga, ha gradiga, just when they thought it was over, they thought the church was done. Ah! Hey, ha, ha, ha. Woo, glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be God. Ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 